Welcome to this video on classification. Now, it's human nature to classify things. It makes our lives easier. So, for example, our hunter-gatherer ancestors might have classified berries into ones that are tasty and you can eat and ones that will kill you. And that information would have been known to everybody and it would have been, uh, it would have been taught and passed down the generations. Have a look at this random assortment of objects. How would you go about classifying the objects shown here? How would you split them up into groups? What criteria would you use? Would you put all the cars together or would you classify them in, on the basis of colour or shape? So there are lots of different ways of doing it, but the most important thing is that we are all using the same method. This is so scientists can talk to each other without confusion. Let me give you an example. The Greeks put worms and snakes into the same group. And they did this because of the common shape, this long, thin, vermiform shape, it's called. But now we put them in completely different groups. For starters, one is a vertebrate, so it has a backbone, and the other is an invertebrate. The modern classifications are a reflection of, uh, of an evolutionary distance between the organisms. How, how close in evolutionary terms are they? Um, the common ancestor of the worm and the snake lived a very, very long time ago. They are not closely related to each other at all, despite the fact they have the same shape. We are more closely related to a snake than the worm is. Let's start with the highest level of class classification. Uh, that's the kingdoms. So we have the animals, multicellular organisms. They contain lots of cells. Uh, they feed off other organisms. And our cells have not got cell walls. We've got the plants. Their cells have a cellulose cell wall. They use light energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen, so it's photosynthesis. The fungi, they have a chitin cell wall. Chitin is a protein, um, and they reproduce using spores. We've got the prokaryotes. Um, this is like bacteria or blue-green algae. Those cells, they cells have no distinct nucleus. Uh, and then we've got the protoctists. Um, we're looking here at things like amoebas, um, usually single-celled organisms, but they can live as colonial organisms. They can live as colonies, but usually single-cell things. Uh, the further divisions are phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So let's put this into practice. Let's have a look at the classification of one particular organism. Um, so we are looking at uh, an animal. Okay, so Animalia is the, is, the, is the kingdom that this one belongs to. See if you can guess what it is. The phylum we're looking at is the Chordata. Now that means it's, um, it's a vertebrate. It's got a backbone. So we've narrowed it down so far, but we've still got a long way to go. It's an animal and it's got a backbone. Next, next division, we've got uh, the class Mammalia. It's a mammal, so that means it's got hair or fur. Um, and it gives birth to live young, so it doesn't lay eggs. It's a carnivore, so it eats meat. Um, it's, it belongs to the cat family. Uh, it belongs to the genus Panthera. We're nearly there. We've narrowed it right down. And the species is Tigris. So there you are. That's how we narrow it down over and over again to get to a tiger. And there are further divisions within the tiger as well, whether it's a Bengal tiger or, or whatever kind of tiger it might be. Um, the the panth panthera, that group, is, is tigers, lions, jaguars, and leopards. Um, and there are other cats that aren't, don't belong to that group, um, like the lynx. Uh, an, an organism is often referred to by its genus and its species. So, for example, we, you, a scientist would refer to a tiger as panthera tigris. Uh, do you know the one for human beings? Do you know what human beings' genus and species is? I'm sure you must have heard it. It's Homo sapiens. Um, and all, all animals can be referred to by their genus and their species. Now, you have to remember this order, so you can think of a mnemonic. Uh, something like, uh, keep pond clean or frog gets sick. Or make up your own memorable one. But in, in however way you do it, you have to remember that order. Now... We've looked at a vertebrate, the tiger, so let's look at some invertebrates. These are arthropods. Um, they have jointed limbs and an exoskeleton. So these are invertebrates, no backbone, jointed limbs and an exoskeleton. So unlike us, they have their skeleton on the outside, you know, like plate armor on the outside. And the arthropods can be classified on the, on the basis of how many legs they have. 
So if an arthropod has six legs, it's an insect. Eight legs means it's an arachnid. So we're talking about a spider, a scorpion, a tick or a mite. They're arachnids. Uh, usually with ten legs, we've got the decapods, the, 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 the crustaceans, like lobsters, crabs and crayfish. And uh, with more than 20 legs, we have the myriapods. So we're looking at millipedes and centipedes. Uh, centipedes do not have a hundred legs, millipedes don't have a thousand or a million legs. Um, I don't think there's ever been a centipede found with a hundred legs. More than 20. Right, let's move on to a definition of a species. What, what is a species? Now that might sound like an easy thing to define, but it's not. It's very difficult. A zoologist would disagree with a microbiologist, and they would disagree with a botanist, and so on. But there is a general definition, and this is it. A species is a group of organisms that can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So, let's have an example to make that a little bit clearer. A horse and a donkey. Are a horse and a donkey the same species? Well, they can interbreed, they can mate. Uh, the result will be a mule. But the mule is not fertile. Two mules cannot have a baby mule. And because of this, we say a horse and a donkey are not the same species. They cannot produce offspring which can themselves go on to, to have further offspring. Uh, the lion and the tiger. The lion and the tiger are not the same species for the same reason. And this is why the liger and the tiger are so rare. Here you can see an evolutionary tree. This shows how closely related organisms are. Our closest relatives on this diagram are the whales. Where the human and whale lines meet, that's our common ancestor. That is what eventually split and turned into us and whales, um, what both of our groups evolved from. You can see here we are more closely related to a Dimetrodon than a frog. And what's a Dimetrodon? <laughs> uh, the Dimetrodon is a creature that lived a long time ago, it went extinct, uh, I think, in the Triassic, so many millions of years ago. Um, they belong to a group called the Synapsids, and they looked like reptiles, and they had a lot of features in common with today's mammals. Um, they were not, as a lot of people think, of dinosaurs. But uh, yeah, we are much more closely related to this extinct species. So these, um, these evolutionary trees can be really interesting to look at. There we are then. That's a quick run through classification. I hope it was useful to you. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you.